and when I say customer service, there's no magic. There's no, you know, there's no, there's no curtain. There's no big production. It's just, it's, it's literally simply trying to do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. Welcome back to the Build With BBB podcast. I'm your host, Casey Farmer, here with Clark Van Dyke of Van Dyke Mechanical, a longtime accredited business and community member. We're so excited. We're going to be talking about their customer-centric business model, what it looks like to be really involved in the community, and how to put your customers first. Clark, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Yeah. Glad to be here. Yeah. So one of my favorite things always to start off with is, how did you get the wild idea to start an HVAC company? Well, I... Uh... Like I was telling you before we got started here, my, I started out of high school in public safety careers, and uh, heating and air conditioning was a um, heating and air conditioning was a you know, part time, you know, day off thing, and it kind of just it became the full time thing. Sure. And uh, through working through other companies, um, that there was just something more that I wanted, and I saw through conversations with people that there was a need for true customer service in the residential and light commercial, you know, heat and air industry and plumbing industry. Uh, there's really a big hole there and um, the right things happened and we decided to make a go for it in 2016. And here we are. Here we are. I learned a little bit beforehand about your story. This is not all you do. You're a very busy guy and an entrepreneur. So would you say kind of always been an entrepreneur at heart? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Always busy doing something. Always need a challenge. Always trying to do everything, you know, everything the best we can or improve even what we're doing constantly. Sure. Sure. So I was checking out your website, getting to know Van Dyke, though you've been accredited, I think, since 2017. So I'm very active in I our community. So. Yeah. Um, several years. So congratulations. One, making it through COVID is is tough. It was tough for a lot of businesses. So, I mean, that shows a lot about getting through that. But a big part of what you do is customer centric. Do you want to talk about that? So like, like we kind of touched on, you know, when, when Van Dyke Mechanical came to exist, um, there was, I was working here in Oklahoma city for a company that did primarily commercial and industrial work. Mm -hmm. Um, they allowed some side work. So I did a little bit, but it was the volume of, Hey, when you get home from work, will you come over to my house and work? Well, you know, can you do this for this person? And, you know, they, you know, my number started spreading and what I was hearing was just like, you know, you, people have gotten to where they depend on their, you know, their heat or their air conditioning or their plumbing system. And when you call a company and they say, okay, we'll put you on the list. <laughs> that doesn't sit very well. Sure. So that's, that's one of the customer service holes um, that I identified. And the other thing was just, just trying to show up and do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it is big. I mean, it's, it's huge. Um, so we, went on a little while with doing some stuff on the side and then it like i said life events happened and it uh it presented an opportunity so um we started this business and uh, me in a truck by myself uh the first day was july 5th 2016 wow. and then we just grew incrementally as the demand you know justified yeah and we hired an apprentice and then we hired a journeyman bought another truck and then we hired another apprentice and then we hired another journeyman and you fast forward to um today and you know at our at our at our maximum you know uh maximum number of employees i think we had 28 full-time employees and yeah. um 12 trucks we're we're down a little bit now just based upon you know demand mm -hmm. but uh um, and, and we've also looked at some stuff as far as efficiencies and different directions the business is going, but, but yeah, it, it grew, it grew really fast and it's, it's, uh, it, I attribute that fast growth and it was really uncomfortable, you know, for the majority of that time too. Sure. You know, it, it wanted to grow faster than I necessarily wanted it to grow, but it's all based on 
customer service. And, it, and when I say customer service, there's no magic. There's no, you know, there's no, there's no curtain. There's no big production. It's just, it's, it's literally simply trying to do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. Interesting. And stand behind what you do. Yeah. And when you started the, with a little, with a truck in 2016, did you imagine that your company was going to look like what it looks like today? Oh, no, no. I went yeah. through the, I went through the, the terror of, oh my, we, you know, we didn't even get a single service call today. What are we going to do? I hope we get something tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you, uh, I feel like you, you spend, you spend a certain number of days terrified that, you know, it's just gonna, it's just not going to work. And, you know, one day you wake up and you go, wow, how did it become this monster? What? Advice would you give to an entrepreneur who might be in that situation that you were in? Hey, I'm not getting a phone call today. It's kind of freaky. What would you tell even your, even yourself or, or another entrepreneur? A lot of, a lot of older, a lot of older guys that have been in business for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, I was fortunate enough to be, you know, uh, that I was fortunate enough to know and be able to talk to um, were just, they give the advice, keep your nose down. You know, focus on what you're doing. Don't worry about what your competitors are doing. Don't worry about what other people are saying. You know, stay the course of what you know that you need to be doing and what your mission is and everything will work out. And, you know, the one thing that we really tried to focus on was if we take care of people, you know, the I never from the start of this have really went out chasing a dollar. You know, we're not chasing the next sale. We're taking care of people and the dollars follow naturally with taking care of people so mentorship is a big part yeah. of that oh yeah in your business so. yeah. yeah yeah and and a little bit of it's just mindset too sure. uh, when we when we first started i had a i had a handful of people that said you know because we started we started in chitty and there was two really established decades old in their companies in chitty and i had a handful of people say you're never gonna make it you're never gonna make it you're making a big mistake there's no way you can go in against these big two and Make a splash at all. I mean, you're you're being silly. You need to go get a job. Well, part of what exists in me is a is a little bit of oh yeah. Well, let me let me show you what we can do. So a little bit. Of, I think it requires it requires risk tolerance. It requires a little bit of obstinance. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, and 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 ultimately, um, I'm one that I I've got a plan B and a plan C for everything that we do. Mm-hmm. Um, it drives people around me crazy sometimes, but every time we embark in a new venture, like we just started a, we just started a septic division, you know, that's been publicly open for two, three weeks now. Oh, but new, new. Okay. New, new. Yeah. New, new. So, but one of the things that that is, is I go into everything we do planning for failure. Okay. And that way, you know, if it looks like it's going that way, then you already know your way out. I think, uh, you know, it, uh, as as romantic as it may sound to just go take the chance and just go for it. You got it. You got a plan for what you're going to do when it fails. Yeah. You mentioned earlier that Van Dyke does not adhere to kind of typical working hours because it's not always best for what the customer needs. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, that's correct. And, and, and if I can sidebar from that a little bit, as far as not typical working hours, and we've talked a little bit about people taking care of people is kind of where, where we started, where Mm -hmm. we want to continue to go. Mm -hmm. That's on the employee side as well as the customer side. So um, my time since I've been doing full-time heating and air conditioning and plumbing work, I've worked for companies, worked for several different companies before we started this. Every one of those companies I took something from, uh, be it things I really disliked about working for that company, things I really liked, uh, management styles, what was... What was a strong, you know, positive management style that existed at this place? What was a management style that ruined morale and, you know, made me not want to get up and come to work at the other place? So when we started, I kind of just combined those things. And we've got the goal of, you know, all of our employees looking forward to get up, you know, getting up in the morning, coming to work, try to maintain a, uh, a family type environment for the employee. Um, you know, we, we realize that everybody works so they can live their life. They mm-hmm. don't live to work. Yeah. And, uh, well, we've got stuff we've got to do. I mean, it has to be within reason. Sure. You know, but, but we understand family comes first. Mm-hmm. And uh, we try to be as flexible as we can, which, which is actually kind of a benefit in the customer service world, too. Because if we have employees that are happy, that enjoy what they're doing, 
it makes the customer experience that much better. Yeah. Um, Because if you're dealing with a a pleasant guy that likes his job and, you know, sees a purpose behind what he's doing, your experience as a customer is going to be a lot better than if you got somebody that's just trying to make the next paycheck. Yeah. Um, The other thing is, is through some of that flexibility, um, we foster an environment, or at least try to, and I mentioned it's a family environment, albeit like a lot of families, it's dysfunctional at times, (laughs) but for the most time, for the most part, it's good. Sure. But the, uh, you know, some of that flexibility results in flexibility that's, that's both ways. So if say an employee needs to take off today because he's got a kid function or something Mm -hmm. like that, but we have stuff pop up on a Saturday or that needs to be done late in an evening or something. Most of our, most of our guys are more than happy to adjust their schedule, make up those hours. And it allows us to take care of customers, you know, and take care of the employee. So that works. But outside of that, even if we're not being flexible or swapping time, something to that effect, um, we do, we do have people on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we understand that the customer's time and back to doing what you say you're going to do when you're going to, when you say you're going to do it, Mm -hmm. everybody's time is valuable. I think time, time is probably the most expensive commodity that any of us have because you're you're not getting it back. So if we say we're going to be at your house between three and five, um, we're going to be there between three and five. If you can't make an appointment during regular business hours, we're more than happy to schedule and make it work, you know, um, weekends or you know at night you know as long as as long as we know and we have a little bit of notice um we can make about anything work but the on the on call situation is uh we always have somebody available you talked about that customer experience Mm -hmm. and how that's so important to your business and unfortunately we see a lot um, albeit like a lot of bad actors in the HVAC industry here oh, at B2B, absolutely. we see a lot of that. And part of that is lack of, you know, quality of service, but it's also quality of like install and how they're recommending products and services. What does that look like for Van Dyke? Well, we, you know, starting in Chickasha, it's a, you know, the, the, uh, Smaller community, you know, I think Chickasha is grow. It, it's growing. It know, is. Where, um, it's bigger now, and it's there's people from the outside that you know aren't necessarily from the area now, so it's changing a little bit. But in a community like Chickasha, word of mouth and reputation literally mean everything. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, one the way we look at it is is you know an unhappy customer is a lot more experience or a lot more expensive, excuse me, than going the extra mile and making sure everything's done right. Sure. Um, We can't be the cheapest. We don't try to be the cheapest. Um, If it comes down to uh, who can get this system installed in my house for the, you know, the least number of dollars. And sometimes people need that, but often you get what you pay for. Yeah, And often if we get in that situation, you know, if, if, if we look at value provided, Mm -hmm. I think we'll win every time. If we look at just number of dollars and how cheap can we do it, I'm not very good at competing in that arena. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not a drastic difference, but you know we're not. That's not where we want to compete. I want to go home and basically, it, I judge everything by how I feel when I go home at the end of the day. If I can go home at the end of the day and feel like I've delivered a product and a service to you at your home that I'd be happy to have in my home or my grandmother's house or you know anybody that's close to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, then we've succeeded. If there's anything that we're like, "Mm, I would have done that different if it was in my house, then we didn't really do our job that well that day. Yeah. So we try to avoid those situations. Um, And unfortunately, like you're saying, a lot of bad actors, we, we are in, we go in behind other companies a lot more than I wish we would have. Sure. And it, it really, it's becoming challenging because Probably one out of every three to five customers we talk to have talked to somebody else, be it other companies or friends or people at church. And they're already, you know, they're already primed up, you know, for the high pressure sales tactics and, mm-hmm. and uh, um, trying to get, you know, people are trying to sell people things that they don't truly need. I'm in that. I'm in that age group where it's, you know, the internet was just starting to be a thing. And, you know, I'm pre, pre Google (laughs) and and the, uh, the Google review phenomenon. Hmm. At first I was really kind of like, man, I can't believe people are taking 
these reviews more seriously because you go to seminars and you really watch customer behavior. People people trust a Google review a lot more than they trust somebody at church or their neighbor or even their relatives. And the more and more I see, like you like you mentioned, I mean, you have a bad experience with somebody close, you know, that somebody sure. close to you referred. Um, you know, Google reviews are a good thing. They're a good thing. But you have to read. If you're someone that's looking at Google reviews, you have to read through the reviews and make your own opinion of whether or not sure. those reviews are, reviews are legitimate or not. Mm-hmm. Because um, there's some very large companies in our industry that somehow, and despite Google's best efforts, there's there's fake reviews getting bought and reviews being transferred. And you sure. know, if you go through and read them, you can start seeing a generic pattern. Yeah. Yeah. I think you you kind of touched on it about high pressure sales tactics, mm-hmm. which is also a big part of bad actors <laughs> in the HVAC community. Yeah, it, it is. Um, one thing we do to combat that is, is none of our techs, none of our employees are paid on commission whatsoever. Mm-hmm. We do not have a commission structure. Um, we're one of the few companies I know of left that pay a technician from the time they get to work in the morning till the time they go home at night. We pay straight hourly. Um, there is some things that if they, you know, if they hit certain metrics, if they, you know, achieve certain sure. things, there's some spiffs and there's some bonuses and so forth, but they don't have mediocre pay with commission bonuses, um, that incentivize sales. And, and honestly, one of my frustrations with employees is we've got we've got some products out there that are really cool that you know provide real benefit to a homeowner. I've got some service techs that just do not like to sell. Mm-hmm. And I wish they'd provide I wish they'd provide this list of you know accessories and so forth to sure. homeowners more often. Not only because Yes, sales make the world go round. That's not what we're 100 percent about. The sales do make the world go round, but it's also about you know indoor air quality and that sort of thing. I hate it when customers are like, "Oh, you guys offer that." Well, the last several times your guy was here, he didn't mention it. Well, yeah, he didn't like to sell. He didn't like to put pressure, but <laughs> okay. um, but there's a the the business model is almost turning into paying a, a very low base wage with the potential to earn crazy money based on commission. Interesting. So, um, you know, like you go on a service call, if I'm on a commission base or if I'm getting paid, you know, a lot of companies call it ticket pay or ticket time or whatever. You get paid for billable hours, not idle hours, but just billable hours. And then you earn a commission. So if I'm at your house and I'm not making any commission and I'm making a livable wage, Okay, this is why it's broke. This is what we need to do to fix it. You agree to that. That may be one part, right? Well, if I'm on commission, all of a sudden, if you don't need a whole new system today to fix this, mm-hmm. then you need four or five parts. You know, so it, it encourages commission-based pay, really encourages overselling. Going down the line of overselling, what do you think are some key elements that a small business owner needs to keep in mind if they're trying to build trust in their community? Just, you know, treat people like you would your your family. Yeah. Um, I, I understand, like as far as the heating and air conditioning business goes, I understand the urge to sell equipment, you know, sure. because we are... are our margins on a system change out, you know, changing a complete system, that's probably where we're going to make the most money in one single day. But with that being said, that's not always what's appropriate. You know, generally when we change a system or when we come to a homeowner or a small business owner and say, you need to replace this air conditioning system, it's done. I mean, it's destined for the scrap heap. There's not, I mean, there comes a point where either it's absolutely not repairable or it makes zero financial sense to continue putting money. Because the repairs are more than what you're going to pay to replace. Or when you, when you have a repair that's going to cost a half to two thirds the cost of a new system. Sure. And then you might, you might have another major repair needed in the next year or something. You know, that, that's what, that's when that conversation is justified. But on a fairness to the customer standpoint and, um, a business strategy, honestly, I'd rather repair your system for the next two, three, four, five years and then sell you a system once I've, you know, 
built by you know built trust within you. Sure. Um, it's cheaper to maintain it, a, well, a it customer is, relationship. It's cheaper for, yeah, it's cheaper. Yeah, and it, it's it's cheaper for you to make those repairs. And a lot of times, if it makes financial sense, sure. I also retain you as a customer longer. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, every there's a lot of companies out there that every time they're going for that sale, they're going for the big sale. Yeah. You know, every time they go out, they're swinging for the fence. As far as building trust, just. Be honest. Um, there's, I mean, is there times companies come out and have disagreed with a diagnosis or something we've made? Do mm-hmm. I have employees that make a mistake from time to time? Sure. We're human, and right? When, and and <laughs> when, they, when they do make a mistake, we own it. And, and as a matter of fact, I don't think there's a business or a person out there that can tell you they don't make mistakes, that they're right 100% of the time. And I, I think, honestly, that the times we've made mistakes and we've owned it and we've presented a resolution... Um, as opposed to that being a negative thing, nine times out of 10, it results in a stronger customer experience because, mm-hmm. because of, you know, at that point they've seen, they, they've seen a screw up they've seen us, you know, provide a solution. Um, but as far as building trust, that was the original question. I think mm-hmm. you asked me building trust as a small business with a customer is just be honest, you know, treat them like you would your, treat the customer like you would your family. Um, if you're, if you're a person taking care of a person, then, you know, the money and the sale will follow naturally. You don't have to pry, you know, you don't have to pry a sale. Yeah. Out. Um, and again, say, be honest, because there's a lot of people that people can check, you know, full second opinions and so forth in our business. And unfortunately we, you know, there's a lot of mystery in our business. Hmm. And there's not a lot of people that truly, if you understand how it works, you're probably not calling us. So like so many other industries, um, you know, good liars, a good salesman, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, maybe good's not the good, you know, thing, but just, just the minute, the minute you, uh, the minute you get caught with something, it's not worth it. I mean, that one sale you get because of something being untruthful is, uh, that's a, kiss of death to the business. Yeah. We just don't do it at all. So it's just honesty all the time, even if we're wrong. How do you, how do you hire and then train your team to keep that front of mind? We spend a lot of time in our interview process. Okay. Um, trying to gauge people's soft skills and where they're at personality wise, where we don't, we don't have any tests or any, you know, special tools or whatever. Um, but I think, um, if you talk to some other people in our management structure, we hire more based upon how somebody is going to fit into our culture mm-hmm. over technical ability. Cause you can teach them. I, correct. I could hire, I could hire a plumber with 30 years of experience and <laughs> they uh, are a heat and air tech with 30 years of experience and they know it inside and out. And they might be just, you know, a secret weapon as far as, you know, the technology goes or the technical ability, um, but they're probably going to be the worst employee that we have just because of the time they've got in the industry sure, and their experience. And it's real hard to make somebody like that fit into our culture. Um, not to say it hasn't happened. It doesn't happen. I've got some people that have came to us with a lot of experience and they fit really well. Um, but we try to, we try to bring people out of, honestly, we try to bring people out of trade schools and start them as apprentices, train them in house, you know, get them a license. And, and we, we basically build our own service techs at this point. And give them a career path. Yes. And the biggest thing with hiring people is if I'm not going to let somebody, if I'm not going to take my house key out of my pocket and send them to my house without me there, if I'm not comfortable sending them to my grandmother's house without me there, I'm not going to hire them because the number, the number of people that trust us to, Hey, I'm going to leave the back door unlocked. The garage door code is, you know, sure is, is honestly, you know, you know, I mentioned my, Previous employment, public safety before heat and air became a, a, a thing for me. It, it's alarming, you know, from that experience to the way people treat us. It, it's honestly alarming. It's humbling, and it, but it's a, it's a huge responsibility. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I mean, it's the trust. The trust has to be built. And 
once we get somebody with a journeyman's license and they're in a truck and we put apprentices with them, you know, we, we, we do a good job. We've built a culture where we police ourselves pretty well. Sure. Um, there's been a couple instances where I've had guys that, you know, are out running a truck, you know, fairly long-term employees that will hire an apprentice and they come to me one morning and go, Ooh, Hey, I got some concerns about this guy because of, um, you know, this circumstance or that circumstance. And we yeah. do it. So we, we police ourselves pretty well. Open communication. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and again, I think a lot of that comes from, you know, the environment that we've created by not, um, by not having a big commission based pay structure and, and, uh, you know, the, the family type environment and everybody knows each other. And we we're fortunate in the fact that most of our guys, um, are actual friends outside of work as well. So a lot of them do things together mm. away from work on sure. the weekends and the evenings and, and so forth. But that's, that's the big things, making sure someone fits the culture, yeah. um, because if they don't fit the culture, it's not going to work. Yeah. What do you do about educating customers? We talked a little bit about, you know, if you've got a customer that knows it all, they're probably not calling you. But for those repeat customers that are coming back sure. to you mm-hmm. often, what does that look like? You know, there's there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of schools and seminars and so forth you can pay money to go to to learn how to sell things, right? I mean, mm-hmm. I'm sure you've heard of them. Sure. I find the best I find the best sales tools actually education. And when we sit down, you know, myself or um, one of the guys, we sit down with the homeowner and it's either repairs or we're talking, we're having that uncomfortable conversation about you need to replace the system. Uh, It's about it. It's about it. A lot of times it's an hour and a half or two hour conversation about what exactly is broke, what it does and what the benefits of replacement are, what the benefits of repair may be, what the drawbacks of that repair mm-hmm. may be. Um, and it really varies, but basically it's just a 100% open conversation, you know, Q&A both directions about finding the fit for that one, you know, for that one circumstance with that one customer. It goes back to that trust factor. Sure. I want to trust you if you're, if I know you're being upfront with me and telling me and helping right. me understand. I mean, I'm not an HVAC expert. You could tell me anything and I, I probably believe it because I, I mean, I, that's, I'm not, that's I'm not encouraging that, but it's true. That's what's, that's what's dangerous about, you know, this industry. As yeah. Like I said, there's a lot of, there's a lot of mystery and, and nobody wants to be cold. Nobody wants to be hot. Yeah. And, um, there's a there's a danger there's danger element to what we do also you know I mean uh, carbon the dangers of carbon monoxide mm. and fire and electricity and all they're all very real. You have a lot of responsibility it's to a, your clients. It's a very it's a very easy thing to do for me to go in there and be like, okay, this is going to kill your family. You've got to replace it now. If you say yes, we can do it tomorrow. If you don't tell me and we don't do it tomorrow, I don't know when we're going to get you on the schedule. And then you guys are going to be living on under blankets in the living room. You know? it, we don't use those tactics at all. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's, it's one of those things where when we get to that point where we have a conversation, um, either if we're not having a customer education conversation, it's a very, very small repair. I gotcha. Um, Anything above that, even if it's just with the service tech, if it's not me or uh, Stefan, who's my my right hand guy, you know, director of opera. Yes, now we call him the um, director of business development. But anyway, we try to go out and handle the big conversations. But um, you know, those conversations entail everything from the simplest repair that can get you by right now, you know, all the way up to replacement. With all the options in between, different efficiencies, different, you know, um, styles, fuel, fuel choices, heat pump versus gas, you know, pretty much sure. every every scenario that's applicable to the situation. Um, and why we may say, you know, if this is my house, um, this is what I would do or yeah. this is what I would tell my mom or my dad to do. Ultimately, the customer's driving the bus. Right. So they're, they're going to make the decision. So we put everything out there on the table go over the pros and cons and we walk away happy if the customer's happy. I love that. You just launched a septic arm of your business. Correct. Let's hear about it. So <laughs> I, I didn't necessarily want to be in the plumbing business after I started this myself. So we resisted that for a while. And then the plumbing calls and the plumbing demand was such that so now you we, do that. We, we've done plumbing for several years. <laughs> okay. 
Um, through plumbing calls, however, we kept running into rural customers that would call for a plumbing issue. And we get there and it's not really a plumbing issue. It's a septic issue. So we were referring them to some people in the area. And once again, I see a customer service hole as well as an opportunity. Um, a lot of the people we were referring people to don't answer the phone, don't return voicemails. Mm-hmm. Or again, we're back to where we'll put you on the list. It may take us three or four weeks to get there. But we'll put you on the list. Well, but what do you do in the meantime well, in those three or four weeks? If your septic tanks, cl- if your septic tanks completely full, <laughs> and you can't you flush a toilet in your house. Sure. It's kind of hard to wait. Yeah, you know, three or four weeks. So then people are, you know, they're they're calling, and you know, we had customers paying huge trip fees and so forth from uh, septic companies to drive a hundred miles with the vacuum truck to come, you know, clean their tank out. Wow. Um, and anyway, so we saw this opportunity. So we, we started putting one foot in front of the other and thinking about it about a year ago, year and a half ago. And then it kind of, it came into existence, you know, through, uh, again, some other opportunities and necessities that presented themselves at the end of the year last year. And, uh, we, we had a dump truck, you know, set up and fabricated and we had our, our, uh, Septic truck, the vacuum truck that you suck the septic tank out with, mm-hmm. you know, fabricated. And we really hope to be up and going, you know, in, in you know, middle, late February, the first part of March. And things like everything else in the supply <laughs> chain, everything kind of went slower than we wanted it to. Sure. Um, had a couple little bumps in the road, but we we kept it real quiet. We actually have installed a couple complete septic systems, um, but we didn't really put anything public until we were ready to go 100%. Yeah. And I think that was the first first week of April when that when that happened. Mm-hmm. When we first started, we launched a Facebook page and started pushing some stuff out. We've had some billboards go up and we've been getting a lot of calls. I mean it's been a it's been a it's been a hit so far. Good. Congratulations. Well thank you. What other services? I we I think we briefly talked about it maybe in the beginning, but I don't think we really talked about everything that Van Dyke does. So we do heating and air conditioning, primarily our our areas that we like to stay in is residential and light commercial. And by light commercial I mean no boilers, no chillers. Okay. Um, you know, so you know, little uh, you know, office buildings, strip malls, you know, that sort of thing. Um, What's your service? Res- residential, residential, residential stuff. And what were you going to ask? Your me? service area. So we work pretty much everywhere between Edmond and Lawton. Okay. Um, we we've we started in Chickasha. Our main office and our all our administrative staff and so forth is in Chickasha. Um, we did, we have opened an Oklahoma city office, um, up off of, it's just South of the Northwest expressway, 89th, Northwest 89th and council area. And I apologize. I don't know the address. (laughs) I can drive there, but I can't tell you the address. Um, the, uh, but you know, so that heat and air and then, you know, full service plumbing, um, we don't do a whole lot of new construction. We will do some, you know, custom home builds and, and uh, some smaller commercial stuff. But we, we, we try to be the we try to be the savior when people have a problem is what we try to focus on. Yeah. Um, service and repair and retrofit, you know, replacement. So we had those two, you know, the heat and air and the plumbing. And then we've started the septic to kind of run alongside the plumbing. Great. Um, and then with septic comes some other ancillary things too. You know, we've got, we've got the equipment mm-hmm. and with our, we've got, uh, our employees on that side have a, a fair amount of experience with dirt work and so forth. So okay. while we're not out being a dirt work contractor, um, we are doing some smaller stuff. Like if somebody needs a dump truck load of, you know, sand for the sandbox or, you know, dirt for a garden project or sure. gravel for a driveway, that sort of thing, you know, we're, we're hauling aggregate, you know, rocks okay. and gravel. We're doing some driveway work, we're, you know, kind of alongside that, but not trying to get in a complete separate thing there. We just try to keep the, we try to keep the dump truck and that driver busy when okay. we don't have a septic install. Sure. So for anybody who's listening or watching today, where can they connect with you, learn more about Van Dyke Mechanical? So you can find us at vandykemechanical.com, which is V-A-N-D-Y-C-K. Unlike, we'll we'll pop it up on the screen. Yeah, unlike... Unlike Dick Van Dyke, the actor, everybody knows it's spelled a little bit different. Okay. 
Um, or you can call us at 405-224-2665. And I'll go ahead. I, it's on all my business cards. That's another difference between us. You know, like all of our management staff, if you interact with us, our cell phones are on our business cards. Mm -hmm. You can get a hold so, of somebody. If you oh, absolutely. Okay. If, 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 if the office frustrates you, call me on my cell phone. You know, that's the, <laughs> um, but my cell phone, I'm going to put it out there as well. It's 405-222-6275. But happy to talk to people. If I can help anybody, you know, in any way, shape, or form, I'd be that. happy to have a conversation. I love that. Thank you so much for being here today. Well, thank for you. For sharing guys. all of the things with our listeners. For anybody listening today, I'm going to put all of that information linked below down in the description box. I'll also put the address to your Oklahoma City office and Chia Shea. Yeah, yeah, I'll link all of that below. If you've got any questions for Clark, um, you can email. I'll put, do you have an email? Yeah, uh, it's just C Van Dyke. You have an email. I emailed you. Mechanical.com. I'll link that below too. Um, thank you so much for listening today. We We'll look forward to you for your ne for our next episode. In the meantime, thanks for listening and thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. Have a good one. Bye friends. Bye -bye.